John, Jace, you're back. We so are I. back. You know, this is uh, this is video number two of mm -hmm. our uh, the the COVID data uh, play that we're doing. So, for those of you who are just finding this video, uh, what you're going to see in this video is us working with a data set that we just finished doing a video on on how to prepare the data. You'll find a link at the bottom of the screen uh, on the to how to get to that previous video. Something worth doing. Uh, but we, we do want to go ahead and say, hey, go take a look at that one. But if you already have a data set that you're, you're, you've been playing with and you're just trying to figure out how to chart it, we're going to show you how you can do that. Very simple data set. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen right now is that data set. We've pulled in uh, every day Johns Hopkins publishes to a GitHub repo um, the COVID data for that previous for that day. Um, so what we've done is a little bit of automation, which I'll talk about at the end, using GitHub Desktop, a little bit of OneDrive for Business Sync Client out to a SharePoint document library, and then we use Power BI Desktop in order to go look at that. And again, go look at that previous video if you want to know all of those details. But what we've done here is we've pulled all the data together. You're going to see some funky stuff in those queries. You're going, what in the world is it? Watch the other video. We're not going to dig into it. What we are going to do before we get started with anything else, though, is we're going to clean up this uh, this table, this query right now, and we're going to do a little bit of transform to it just so that we minimize uh, the amount of data that we're loading in. But before we do that, John, something I realized from the last video, we forgot yep. to rename the date column. So we should we, probably, instead of calling it source name, call that date. I think I will. There we go. It's a good name for that because that's what it reflects. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, and we're not going to use some of the data here either, right? Yeah. So um, let's get rid of FIPS. Let's get rid of FIPS. Combined latitude, key. longitude. Yeah, we're not going to use Latin long. No. Yeah. Well, we could, but we're not going to. And we're not going to use active because we, we can calculate that. We also know right now that was only uh, that data only has been reported as of right now for one day. Yeah. So we wanted to do active, but we're not going to bother. But we could we could do that by uh, by simply calculating confirm minus deaths minus recovery. So yeah. So but this way we that. get rid of almost half the data that we're pulling in. And that's so this, important. This when, is going to make it a lot faster to load. Yeah, so. yeah. Faster to load, smaller data models. That all matters. Optimization when you're dealing with large amounts of data. Not that this is large amounts of data, but uh, it's just a good practice to keep things as trim as possible. Uh, you know. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't follow that model, John. We really don't. But let's okay. go ahead and load the data into the model now. I'm going to close and apply, and that's going to take a second. And that's now going to actually go out and iterate through all of those CSV files that are sitting in that SharePoint library and bring the data into our model. We're going to have to wait just a second for this. Yeah. So while we're doing that, um, again, we a big thank you to a couple of folks. Uh, you know, uh, so Rob Foster is the one who got us started doing this in the first place because he created uh, a great video on how do I go and just take a single file of this COVID data uh, and just go visualize it. So we're going to put a link to that you are to that video here in the bottom of the screen. Go take a look at that because that was super useful. Played with some of the different visualizations. Uh, and, and Rob calls himself a newbie at all of this. He uses Power BI for work, but he was looking at all this stuff with his kids and his kids were really interested. And so he decided, let me build out something and let's see if I can replicate the Johns Hopkins visual data. So John, you wanna pop that guy back up on the screen for just a second. Oh, the John Hopkins data, yeah. Yeah, just so we can show what we, what we were looking at. That would be this guy right here. So this is this is the dashboard that Johns Hopkins has put together using ArcGIS, uh, and it's it's evolved over time. When John and I started doing this, the bottom right hand corner gra of graph was not at all useful. Now, as you move from country to country, you can see very useful data. But we really wanted to be able to get to some useful data for those of you who are looking for the GitHub repo down in the bottom pane, down next to 169 countries to the right of that, you'll see Download Database GitHub here. Click on that, it takes you over to that other link that John had. That's where you get to that data. Anyway, moving back to our Power BI. Yeah, so you can see we've got our data model. It's a very simple data model, there's not a lot to it. Uh, it's got our, the measures we care about, confirmed deaths and recovered, and it's got date, and that's what we wanna, rec uh, what we wanna plot. So I'm gonna just select my, my canvas over here, and I'm gonna start by selecting confirmed. 
and we get a bar chart. And what that's showing us by, uh, with, with nothing else is how many cases that we have out there. John, that doesn't look like the right number. That doesn't really look like the right number at all, does it? No. So why is that? Why is that happening there? Well, as I mentioned in the last video, um, every piece of or every one of those files, and uh, as, as you slice it down to country or region, it's giving you a total number as of that date. So um, it's not giving you the new uh, records for that date. So if it was doing that, this number would be right because it automatically is adding up all of the uh, all of the uh, elements together. Okay. So what we actually want to get is the latest or the most recent count if we're going to work on this. And and by, we're gonna... But by default, when you drag on a number function yep. into a value, yep. the, the default is sum. sum. It's yeah. going to sum up all of the numbers that are in that column, yeah. every and single can, one of them. And you can control that, actually. If I come here to confirmed, and if I come up to the column tools, you'll see summarization is sum. Now, if I wanted to, I could uh, do an average. You'll see those numbers on the chart uh, will not change because I've already dragged it on, but it, you can see it now says sum of confirmed because I can override what the default aggregation is. For example, I could come down here uh, and pick average here, and now we're getting the average number over all, all, the, all of the records, which also makes no sense. No, that doesn't help purpose. us at all. But what I, uh, what I will do here, uh, and so I, what I want to do is do a, is do a calculated measure that will give me the latest totals sliced by whatever dimensions I may have. So I'm going to go ahead and create a calculated measure. You think I should paste it or type it out? What do you think? I, can, I, I think you can way. paste it, John, and we'll just right. talk to it and show everybody what it actually means. Go ahead right. and dismiss that recovered files dialog just so that it gets rid of it for us. Oh, yeah, thanks. Not a problem. That one's a pain in the butt. Okay, so because I changed the names on everything, because uh, I'm not consistent with anything, I have, <laughs> have to edit this a little bit. That's okay. Uh, it basically shows that you can. So this is basically a formula that we've done on some. Uh, uh, a, a well, the other thing, John, that you could do, if if, if you wanted change to, the name of the table. You yeah. could change the name of the table, which would make your life a lot easier. But you're going to be stubborn and do it this way, so that's okay. <laughs> it's too late. So yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> So what this is, and this is a, a fairly, yeah, it, for, for some, this might be a co uh, complex dash, DAX measure. It's actually a fairly simple one. What I want to do is say, I want to add up all of the elements, but I want to filter only by the latest date. So that when I, when I do a slice later on by country, it's going to be the latest for that country, et cetera. So what I'm doing is I'm using the calculate function. The calculate function is the most important thing, frankly, in DAX. And I'm saying sum of confirmed. Add up all of the confirmed values, but filter where the date is, uh, of the data is equal to the max of the um, uh, the maximum value in the table. All right, because this context will change here in a second. I'll show you how. But this basically is gonna uh, gonna give me the latest numbers. So if I hit the checkbox right here. All right, and I make my editing screen go away. And if I come over here to the same chart and I replace confirmed with latest cases and dismiss that, you can see that's the number we were at as of yesterday. Yeah, uh, it looks a lot more realistic. About 370,000. Yep. Now, that's just the latest. What happens if I take date now and drag this on to, my, to be my x-axis? It automatically builds, if I don't do anything different, a, a date hierarchy for me. So it's basically showing me what that number is for 2020. And I can drill down. I could, uh, I could come up here and I could drill down a level. And you can see January, February, March. And what that's now giving me is the latest number of cases in February, the latest number of cases in March, right? It's according to the context of the data. So the latest day in March, the latest day in February, the latest day in January. And again, say I wanted to drill into March. Now you get, uh, get the curve that you might be uh, starting to get familiar with here. But I don't want to plot it that way. I want to just have a continuous line of all of those dates, and I don't want to have to drill up and down and around, et cetera. 
So I'm gonna come over here to my well uh, where I have my date axis, and I'm gonna pick this little drop down. Instead of using the date hierarchy, I just wanna use the date. There we go. I wanna use a line chart because I think that, that uh, shows trends a little bit better than the bar chart. All right, so Except, you did that in the visualizations well there, John. I, you went yeah, I did that in the visualizations. You changed that uh, from, from being the bar to the, being the, the line chart. There. That's correct. I just changed the different visual right here. Uh, uh, yeah. So another thing I might want to do is show, this is the total number of cases, but I might want to show deaths. So I can simply do that by oops, selecting the visual first, uh, taking the deaths and dragging that now down onto values. And also I would... Oh, I need to, what, what mistake did I just make? I did not create a calculated measure for death. did not. So let's go oh. ahead and do that really quickly, John. Yeah, I'm gonna just come up here and get the, uh, the code that I used to create latest cases. And hang on, make sure it's blue, make John. Sure it's you blue, have to make not sure gray. it's blue, it's, yes. If it's gray, you can't copy it uh, for whatever reason. Um, and I'm going to punch in here, new measure again. I'm just gonna paste that. Only I'm gonna call it latest deaths. And I, all I have to do in this case is change, change the measure that I'm using to add up. And that's deaths. All right. And I, that should do the job. I'm just going to hit the check mark. While you're at it, John, why don't you go ahead and create the one for recovered also yes. so that we're giving some hope. You're way ahead of me. You're way ahead of me. All right. So, and I'm going to do the same thing for recovered. And I got to remember to change the name before I hit the check mark. Yes. And the name will be latest recovered. Didn't put two spaces in there, did I? No, I didn't. Nope, single. You're good. We're good. All right, so now I have measures, the latest measures for deaths and recoveries. Let's go ahead and drag that on. We'll put recovered underneath and then deaths underneath that. Now, um, one of the things when you're doing report design is you want people to understand what your report's all about as quick as possible. And one of the ways you can do that effectively is with color. When I when, when we look at when we look at red, we think danger. When we think we look at yellow, we think caution. We look at green, everything's good. Well, to my mind, that means we should color recoveries green, cases yellow and death's red. Make sense? That makes sense to me. Do me a favor though, John, go ahead and minimize your, your, uh, the, the, uh, the oh, that thing again. Yeah, that guy. Uh, but also that one right there, yep. the formulas bar. There we go. Oh, that was the word I was looking for. I'm just going to go ahead and remove those files. Yep. There we go. Okay. But minimize the formulas yep. bar. There we go. Yep. Now we can see that Everything you know, when, when we change on. the colors, it'll be a lot easier to see. True enough. So I've got the visual selected and I'm going to come over here to my paint roller icon where I can change all the visual properties of the visual. Um, and then I'm going to come down here to my data colors and I'm just going to say deaths are going to be red. Uh, the, uh, uh, cases is going to be orange. Actually, it's going to be yellow. Orange yeah, is a little yellow. too close to red to tell the difference. And then recovery is going to be green. I don't have green on my palette. I don't but know why I they just, don't give us a green, John. I don't know. I don't know. By default. Anyway, I just click on that and that gives us exactly what we want there. You know, John, that's really nice, um, and it, it's it's starting to show that I, I like that recovered trend starting to tick up a little bit. It's yep. really hard to tell the deaths there. Yeah, um, it is. And it, just recently, they gave us a new visualization capability yeah. here, right? So yeah. why don't we take a look? Don't know if this is something we actually want to use, uh, but let, let's take a look at it because it's a good example of of this new y uh, secondary y axis, right? So if we want to see, yeah, if we want to see the death trends a little bit better, let's just take deaths and put it on the other axis, the second y axis. And if we're going to do that, you can see now we've got a different set of numbers on the right hand side than on the left hand side, but it doesn't turn the title on by default. And I'm not that's sure odd. why I think it should, because that's going to also draw your eye to it. Oh, that's the title for the whole thing. I need to turn on the title for the Y axis. I'm like, right there, down here. there it is. There's a switch. Boom. Now you can see this is the latest deaths versus the latest cases and latest recoveries. So you can see that the trend is very similar to the number of cases as well, which probably makes sense for a whole bunch of reasons that I'm not going to get into. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that's kind of that basically gives us that that chart that the Hopkins uh, folks uh, give us, but a, a couple more pieces of uh, information right there. Right now, uh, what if what, what if we want to see it break down by country? 
That's gonna, get, that's gonna get kind of messy, but let's try. Let's check it let's out. Let's give it a shot anyway, right? So what I'm gonna do is take the same report. I'm just gonna copy the report and paste it. So all the things I've done so far are replicated here when I do that. And I'm just gonna mess with the sizes a little bit, make it a little bit shorter, make this one maybe just a little bit shorter. There we go. All right. And we've got uh, we've got the latest cases, etc. Well, we don't want to have in this case. We're not gonna use the Y2 axis, so we can turn that off. And we're not going to use recovery. We just want to see cases by country. And in this case, uh, the visualization we'll probably want to use is a stacked chart. Okay? So this is all countries. But we're going to use country as a legend in this case. So let's go find our countries field. It's third one down. There country we go. or region. And make that the, uh, a legend. Wow. Yeah. I'm not thrilled with this. No, that's, that's kind of messy. So right off the bat, you can see here's our legend. There's 160 some odd countries, right? Mm -hmm. So we could scroll it. Now, one of the nice things about it, though, is that we could click on one of the countries and it makes everything sliceable, which is something I just discovered recently. <laughs> yeah, but, it's, was... but there's not that many countries to distinguish. I can't necessarily tell. I know, I happen to know that this one is China because it came on early. It was <laughs> lost. It hasn't changed much, but I don't know what the purple one is. Or I can't necessarily distinguish between uh, the, the, the Pantone color for this light gray and the Pantone color for that light gray. Not the most effective. And you'll notice, you can, you can do some things with the legend. Maybe uh, the legend can help us. We, if we look at the legend, we'll change the position maybe onto the right-hand side. And that's also sliceable. But, and you can scroll on it a little bit easier uh, this way. But what you'll notice fairly quickly is if you scroll down quite a ways, we end, in this case, at Sweden. And the reason for that, you see this little eye icon, too many values. Yeah, that, that makes it not really useful in this situation, John. I, I think we need to, to get rid of this visual. That's, this is just yeah. not a great visual. So let's, uh, let's come over here, and I'll pick one of your favorite visuals. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're... Yeah, yeah, we're, 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 I, I know where you're going it. with this, John. We're going to a pie chart, aren't we? We're going to a pie chart. Yeah, just because people are familiar with a pie chart and for our purposes here today. Although pie charts aren't necessarily considered the best. Um, uh, they, 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 anyway, they give, yeah, we, no, we, we, we need to change it. That's I, I'm a just whole lot of data, problem. John. That's a whole lot of data. So um, we don't want to have date as a legend, for one, to start with. Um, we've got the latest, well, actually, this is where we, where we wanted to be. We've got country as the details, basically the categories here. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the number of deaths showing here, um, both with a number and as a percentage. But I'd like to see what country that is, right? Yeah, but... but, but I can hover over it and see it. That's yeah. one. Yeah. And one of the problems we have with this, uh, unlike the stacked line chart that we were looking at, this one actually is showing all of the data because we don't have that little eye. But man, it is. There's so much here in those little tiny slices. I, I really can't tell what I'm looking at, John. But you think you only you only want to see the top uh, uh, so many? Yeah, maybe the top 15 or so would be useful. All right. Well, let's 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 do this. Well, first of all, I want to make sure everything's still right. So, can you keep an eye? That's the China number, right there. Yeah. Right? Let's let's. It's yeah. 21 percent, 81,000. But I only want to show show say the top 15. Yeah. Let's show the top 10 uh, to start with. So I'm going to come up here to the filter pane, and I'm going to come over here to country, and I'm going to go down here to pick the, uh, the, the, the filtering type. And instead of picking basic or advanced, I'm going to say top N, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say I want the top 10, Yep. and I want that filtered by the latest cases. So I'm going to drag that and make it right here. And I'm going to apply the filter. And you can see now it's a lot more readable, right? Yeah. Okay, but something bad just happened, John. What's uh, that? That 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 was China, right? First yep. of all, let's ah. can, we, can we can we change the labels just a little bit? But China just went from twenty one percent to twenty five point two nine percent, and we yep. didn't change the data here. So yep. something's funky. This the yep. The reason that happens is because the percentage that's reported in the visual is a percentage of the data element shown, not a percentage across the data set. If you want to use a percentage across the data set, you're going to need to do that with a calculated measure. Yeah. So this but, one, not the, not the best to use a percentage on. So yeah. maybe, maybe we should change what we're looking at because this is really useful. I want to yeah. see the top 10 or the top 15. But yeah. let's, let, maybe if we make some changes here to what we're actually looking at, it'll actually be useful. 
So yeah, so I've got the visual selected. I've come over here again to the paint roller and I'm gonna come down here to the detail label and we have control over what shows right here. And you can see what's selected by default is the data value and as of a percentage of the total. We don't want that. We're just gonna say the category, which is in this case gonna be the country and the value itself. So you can see China at 81,000, Italy at 64,000. You guys are getting up there, uh, yeah. 34,000. I'm Canadian for anybody who's listening. So that's why I say you guys. Yeah. <laughs> or you folks. I said, well, the, the, the correct way to do that. There you go. Um, we can just say y'all, dude. Anyway. It's a lot yeah, y'all. That's y'all are getting on up there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Do me a favor. A I want to see, I, I see this. Uh, make sure that the numbers don't change again. Hover back over China for me. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at 81,496. Yep. And go ahead and change that to 15. Top 15. And that might be better anyway. Let's hit the apply. There you go. Looks like we're still the same numbers. All right, so that's date. That's real data. Again, I don't care about that percentage because it doesn't matter. It's percentage of that top 10 or top 15 that we're looking at. This is a useful visual, John. Yep, I like it. I like it. Um, and for you pie chart haters out there, it, that's a still a useful visual. Yep, exactly that. So now I want to get a, um, a, a visual of mortality. I want to see if, the, if there's a difference in the, in the rates of mortality for, for different countries. Uh, first off, I'm just going to copy the pie chart and control V. And that's fairly simple. Line it up there. And I'm going to go ahead and create a measure for mortality. So I'm going to create a new measure. I'm going to call it mortality, and that's going to be equal to the latest deaths divided by the latest cases. Now, we may have a situation in our data where we have nulls or zeros for the total number of late, latest cases, and that's going to give us a divide by zero problem, so we should check for that. So I'm going to go ahead in here and make a con add a conditional statement at the beginning. And there's a function for it in DAX called is blank. I'm going to test for is blank. And the, the, the measure I'm going to test for is blank is latest cases. So if, latest ca if the latest cases is blank, mm -hmm. then I'm just going to use the value zero. Otherwise, I'm going to do the calculation. So we're not going to wind up doing the calculation if this thing isn't right and I have messed something up. Just blank. Latest cases. Yeah, you, you're missing. A, I, I'm an missing open. an if. <laughs> yeah, I was just say you're, you're you're missing that part. So not a big deal. I think you got it now. Uh, and I might need another bracket. No. Nope. Nope. It, it looked okay. like you were clean. Go ahead and check it. Click that. I am clean. Look at that. What do you know? Well, I don't know about that, John. But okay, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's. let's that, 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 that new calculated measure is clean. So let's that's correct. Yes, yes, yes. Click into that visual and let's see what we can all, do all with those. this. Well, but first thing I want to do though is uh, on my, on my uh, calculated measure, I want to say I want to display these values as percentages. Yeah, so that's going to set the default every time you drag that on. So it's always going to show it as a percentage by default. Yep. So now I select the visual, I take mortality. I'm just going to replace my latest cases with that value. And you can see how that breaks out. Now, nice. Yeah, that's that's kind of fun. Now, it's also sorted by the latest cases. I don't want to do that. Remember, we did that. I copied that visual over. It remembered the uh, the uh, top 15 uh, sort. It's sorted by latest cases. I want that also to get the top 15 by mortality. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that and see how that changes. But as, as you noted, is check out the number for uh, Sudan in this case. So we got 50% mortality for Sudan. Um, I'm curious, John, if you hover over that, does that actually show us the real number? It's 20% of the item, uh, the 20, 20% uh, of the items here because it's a different measure, mm -hmm. right? That's what it, that's what it's uh, showing us. But what, what I wanted to show here is if I pick the top 10 sedan at 50% is not going to change. It stays 50%. It's not just a set, but that's because we did the percentage in, uh, in our calculation here. Let's go back to 15. So here are the countries that have the highest mortality rate thus far for the COVID-19 virus. Uh, well, Italy's right up there, but they're not the highest. But mm -hmm. it, it is important to understand that that's, you know, what we're looking at here, and, and this is the calculation that John did, was 
cases by deaths. Yes. You know, so this is not, you know, percentage of mortality overall. Yeah. That was what we were looking at with latest cases. Right. Well, this is purely a mortality by country. So by, by the mortality rate. Yes. But that might be, I mean, we might want to have the same country showing on this pie chart as we do on that pie chart. And we just want to know the mortality rates. And that's how we had it before. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to put it back, that's simple too. I can just simply go back to latest cases, drop that onto there, apply the filter, and that's what's done there. Yeah. So this is this is an interesting thing to be able to take a look at because you know when we're talking about the highest number of cases versus you know when you look at that at Sudan, when you look at some of the other countries that were there, their number of cases is very low. Therefore, their percentage of deaths when you have one death out of call it ten, that's a high number. That's right? as a high percentage. So that's why that it's important that when you're looking at these things to understand what you're really looking at, what those the details behind the data are. So it's worthy of, of a look. And yep. so yeah, this this I think is a really good visualization. So John, yep. let's let's go ahead and, and speed up just a little bit and let's let's get some more data on the screen. Just a couple more things we want to add on here. To start with, we might want to know at a snapshot what the numbers are. Yes, they're on the screen in charts, but let's just call it out. I'm just gonna come over here and click on the latest uh, cases. And instead of a bar chart, I'm gonna make that a card visual. I like card visuals. They basically say, here's what it is. I do too. That one, I, I, I like it when it actually shows the full number though, John, I don't know about you. That, that that's- You wanna make it wider? That, Let's come over one, here. Yeah. Let's come down to our category. Oop, not our category, our data label. And change our display units from auto to none. And if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna to wanna to format that. So it's a little bit prettier. I'm gonna use commas. So boom, and I'll make this wider, and there we and where have. Where did you set that to use commas, John? Oh, I'm sorry, to the I, I, I selected the measure, and then gone up to the measure tools, or it would be column tools for a column, and just picked on the picked that little column right there. Very nice. So I'm gonna take that now, I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna paste, oh, paste it, and underneath, and paste again, underneath, and instead of latest cases in this case, I'm gonna come pick latest deaths. You wanna switch over from format to, there we go. I, oh, there we go, to, to, yeah, I wanna go there. All right, I'm gonna go latest I deaths. Click on it though. Ah, I clicked and turned off format, there we go. Okay, latest deaths onto here. And from here to latest uh, recoveries. And the same thing for these guys. So latest recovery selected. I'm gonna come up here to measure tools, hit the comma. Latest deaths, hit the comma. There and the other thing I'd, I'd add is the names aren't the greatest. I mean, latest, we wanna distinguish that in the data. We know that it's the latest, but really it's the total number of deaths. The report reader doesn't care about the word latest. Let's go ahead and just change the name of the field in the visual. This doesn't change it in the model. It just changes it in the visual. So cases, if I select the visual, deaths, because you want to see latest in the model, but you don't want to see it in the visual. And finally, recoveries. All right. And a couple nice. of other things. We, we might want to have a country slicer. We want to, be able, want to be able to drill down into a specific country very, very quickly. So let's uh, let's come down here. Let's grab let's grab country. Drop it on there and turn that into a slicer. That's a visual. You can see it picks a map by default. Let's go with slicer. And we'll just leave it uh, leave the default slicer behavior alone for now. And finally, we might might want to have a time slicer. So we could just change the scale of this chart by, by date. So same thing, come down here, select the canvas down here. I'm gonna select date. I'm gonna change that to be a uh, uh, contiguous date. Oh, it well, showed up on the chart up here. And I'm gonna make that into a slicer. And there we have a date range slicer. I'm just gonna change the size of it and drag that over to the bottom right hand side here. Oops, and well, you can see that it works. <laughs> so I can scroll down here to any um, any particular item. Uh, I'm in Canada. I care what's happening in Canada. There we have the items there. Um, of course, the pie, the pie charts are going to be solid. 
Uh, I don't necessarily care about all the dates before March 8th, so I can just drag the slicer over here and pick March, say, 7th, and you can see what the trend looks like for Canada that way. Um, and of course, if I pick the Angola now, it'll select that. And just for, for, uh, for the sake of argument, I can pick multiple countries at the same time by hitting shift and select. So if I go back to Canada, I can select Canada and then pick, say Chad. And I've got both countries now selected. So you're going to get a cumulative number. Okay, Chad was a bad example. But whatever. China, China would be a good one. Yeah, whoop. <laughs> So they they kind of overwhelm us, but that gives you uh, uh, the general idea. So if you wanted to pick a few countries and analyze it that way, but that's the power of Power BI. So in a few minutes, you know, we've got this report that kind of pulls it all together. I'm just going to clear away my slicer, and there you go. There's all right, our total numbers. that yeah. is very cool, John. Hopefully, people found this super useful. Um, if you did, feel free to go ahead and like the video, share this with people. Um, again, uh, the last little bit we wanted to talk about. Yeah. was uh, some automation bits. And I'm not we gonna want to show publish. it on, yeah, we I'm want not, to publish it first. No, no. let's go ahead, and, yeah, let's go ahead and publish this, that, that'll that work. So first, I'm gonna hit publish. Now I haven't saved this report yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and save it. I'm just gonna pick a name in this particular case, it doesn't really matter where it's being saved. So I'm gonna call it COVID demo. It's gonna save on my local file system. And I'm gonna have to uh, change my identity. <laughs> <laughs> I just think. publish it to your workspace. Just, I'll just okay. publish. Okay, I'll just publish uh, it out to my regular workspace. Fair enough. So I'm going to go ahead and publish it out to my workspace. COVID demo. All right, and, and I'm going to go open. ahead. Yeah, there it, go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the wrong wrong browser window. That's what I was worried about. So I'm going to just pop over here to a different browser window. Uh, open. Up. So when you're dealing with multiple profiles, you have to deal with that sort of a thing. Uh, so my workspaces, I'm going to go to my workspace. I should see COVID. Uh -oh. Demo, third one down. Third one down, there it is. Okay. And there it is. Um, I want to schedule a refresh. Interestingly, it made your colors more dynamic, John. Changes the, the colors. Yeah, and I'm not sure why. I haven't really drilled it. If I explicitly state the colors, like up here. You yeah, can it doesn't mess with them. But it's just picking defaults otherwise. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure why that happened. So, John, let's go ahead and schedule the refresh really quickly. Yeah. Uh, so, you need to go into data sets, pick data. Data sets, COVID demo. I'm going to just quickly go into the schedule refresh options. Uh, open up schedule, keep my data up to date. Um, you are going to have to give it the correct credentials because yeah, we are going out to SharePoint. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. In this case, I'm using my main unlimited Viz account. No, I'm not. That was a bad mistake. This is going to fail because that Oh, no, I am. I, I, my limited visit account has access to that data, so we're good. So I, I basically have to enter uh, credentials of the user who can access those files in SharePoint. Yep. And then I, I'll have to say, go ahead and keep my data up to date. When did you say you are updating the, uh, uh, the you GitHub data? You want to set this for about 8 p.m. Uh, sorry, 9 p.m. Eastern time or 8 p.m. Central time. I just picked Central time so that we know, and I'm going to specifically say, um, you can say 7.30. Or 7.30 is realistically when I have it set for in our data. So, so that means uh, it'll be done by 8 for sure. So yeah. I'll pick 8 p.m. Central Time, hit Apply. And now that report is going to be refreshed every day at 8 p.m. Central. And so when, when Jason finishes updating the GitHub files or his automated process updates them, it's going to be updated automatically here in the dashboard. And I can share this thing out. I can... Uh, I can come back to the, the, the report itself, come up here, go to uh, open the report. And we've already got one of these, so I'm not gonna bother doing it, but if I come down here to embed, if it's turned on, I can publish this to the web, it's published data, I can then go share it with people. Yes. Anyway, yeah. And we will create a short link that you will see right here in the, uh, in the bottom of the video uh, for you to be able to go out and see what we've done. We'll publish it out there. We're not going to use John's workspace, so we'll republish no. this. We may add a couple more pages in as well, uh, just so you can take a look at some other things. So take a look into that. Now, in the last closing minute here, 
I talked the, a little bit more about automation stuff uh, inside of the GitHub side of things. Uh, you do need to go off and do a little bit of reading. Uh, and I'll write up a little blog post at some point about this. Uh, but basically, you're going to download Git, uh, which goes into your command shell, which works very nicely over in, uh, in PowerShell as well. And what I did was I wrote a PowerShell uh, script, which I'm happy to share, uh, as well as in my world, I, I created a batch file because I was running into some problems that my friend Todd Clint uh, was able to help me overcome. He has a blog post about you about scheduling tasks using the Windows Scheduler using PowerShell. So I will link that in the show notes in the notes here as well. Um, but what I did was I just used a simple batch script that called the PowerShell script. Uh, so I did that a little bit dirtier, uh, but it actually worked very nicely. It took a little bit, of, uh, little bit of time to figure it out, but once I did that. It's now working, so it does the pull from Git every day. I don't have to interactively deal with it, um, but that made it really nicely, uh, you know, really nice for, for everybody. So with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Hopefully you found this useful. If you're wondering how we got the data and you just you missed it at the beginning, we'll put the first video in, uh, in a link down here. Also, uh, thank you to uh, Todd Clint for his help, to Rob Foster, uh, for his inspiration to get this started. Again, his video, uh, we've linked a couple times, we'll put it one more time here. Go off and take a look at that as well. And uh, also some consultation from those guys in the cube. Uh, check out their stuff as well. They did some really great stuff around this as well uh, and have been very helpful. So thank you, John. Great stuff, buddy. Thanks, man. All right, we'll talk to you. We'll talk to you later, bye. Bye. Oh, I guess we probably should have mentioned that we do a podcast, huh? Oh yeah, there is that. Yeah. Go out and check out the Bifocal Show podcast. We do it weekly. Uh, it's the first time we mentioned it in this whole video series. But well, um, you're wearing the shirt. So I am wearing okay. the shirt. So if people were wondering, that's what that is. Anyway, have a great day, buddy. Bye-bye.